Ah, speaking of doing things non-visually, we are now decomposing fractions apparently not visually. Oh, excellent. Love it. Okay. Which one of these, or which of these sums, and it does say two answers, be careful when you're looking at this, two answers, which of the sums equals five sixths? So if each of these represents piles of sixths, how many of them? Well, we want five, right? So this top one, well, how many sixths do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five, six. That one checks out to me. In this one down here, we've got four six over here plus one six over here. Again, if I have four pens and one pen and I put them together into a pile of pens, that's five pens. Four sixths plus five sixths equals, I'm sorry, plus one sixth equals five sixths. A and B, I believe, is our answer. Let's go ahead and check C, though, just to make sure. Three, four, five, six. So in part C, it actually gave us six sixth. Man, I wish they would stop making me say the word sixth. Thank you. I don't know if you can tell, but it's very warm in here. Sacramento is like 100 degrees today. Okay. Complete this equation. Two-fifths plus three-fifths plus one-fifth plus blank equals nine-fifths. Okay? So I want to know, again, this is not a fourth grade, um, this is not a fourth grade fractions problem. This is a first or second grade counting problem. I have one, two, three, four, five, six fifths currently. Yeah, there's six up there if I total them up. How many more fifths do I need to make nine? If I have six blocks, how many more blocks do I need to make nine? Well, I need three fifths. Is each expression less than, equal to, or greater than seven tenths? Well, let's see. This top one is three and four tenths. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tenths. Do not be afraid to use those fingers. That's what they're for. So this is equal to seven tenths. This second one, one, two, three, four, five, six tenths total. That is less than. Remember, and some people, especially at the high school level, start to get on you for using this. Don't listen to them. Keep using it. The alligator bites the bigger number. This alligator is biting this way because seven tenths is the bigger number, which means that one tenth plus two tenths plus three tenths is less than seven tenths. You don't have to memorize that this symbol means less than, although it would be helpful if you do, just like the times tables. You don't have to memorize it, but you can just remember the alligator eats the bigger value, and then when you read it left to right, that just means that the left side is less than the right side. Now this bottom one, let's see, we got one, two, plus three is five, plus one is six, plus another one is seven, that is equal to seven tenths. Again, I hope you can see that this is less about doing fraction arithmetic and more about just counting. And when we come to a common denominator, that's what we're doing. We're changing it from a fractions problem into a counting addition and subtraction problem, just like we've been doing for the last couple of years of videos. What fractions together add to make five eighths? So I'm supposed to choose two of them that if I add them together, they make five eighths. Again, I can just ignore the denominators entirely. Because they are all the same, I can just pretend like it doesn't even exist. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, I'm trying to make five. Yeah. Muncie says I work in molecular biology and I still use the alligator analogy. Yes, because it is important, it is very, very easy to remember, and a lot, like I said, a lot of, of, of folks who are kind of math purists get down on that sort of thing, but it's really important to use what works, and the alligator analogy works. So it looks to me like if I want to make five, uh, B and D, one and four, would get me five. So I'm going to go ahead and choose B and D, one-eighth plus four-eighths equals five-eighths. Moving on. 
Which of these sums equals 16 over 8? Now I'm going to pause here for just a moment because there is a, a piece of vocabulary that I actually kind of want you to eject from your mind, and that vocabulary is improper fraction. I am not a fan of this vocabulary. There is nothing improper about an improper fraction. It's just a fraction that's greater than 1. That's all it is. We did, in previous videos, compare fractions to 1. If a number like 16 over 8 exists, that means that we've got 16 pieces of pizza. Each piece is from a pizza that's cut into eighths. And we've got 16 of them, which makes two whole pizzas. So it's just a fraction that's bigger than one. It's nothing, it's nothing mysterious. There's nothing improper about it. It's not evil. It's just a fraction that's bigger than one. Anytime the numerator is greater than the denominator, the whole fraction is bigger than one. And I hope that makes sense because it means that you've got more than one pizza worth of slices. Okay. Okay. So let's see. We're choosing one answer. And I think... So this top one is, is, is very tempting because 12 plus 4 is 16. But again, this 4 is not the same 4 as this one. This is making a very classic mistake where it is simply adding the top and adding the bottom. We will find out later that multiplying fractions really does work that way. You just multiply straight across the top and straight across the bottom. But with A, you got to be careful. Those are not common denominators. You cannot add them directly. So B is too many. I'm going to assume that it's probably C, but let's go ahead and do it anyway. 5 and 5 and 5. 5, 10, 15, and then another one is 16 eighths. I think that's our, that's our answer. Complete this equation. Again, and I know I keep saying this, this is not a fractions problem. We are trying to figure out, we've got 4 plus 9, which is 13, plus another 5, which is 18, plus something over 6. It's going to have to be some number of sixths to get us to a total of 21 sixths. And I think I said it was 18, 19, 20, 21. 3 sixths is the correct answer. Is each expression less than, equal to, or greater than 12 eighths? Well, let's see, 8 and 6, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, that's bigger than 12, eight, or 12 eighths, so the alligator will bite the bigger side. Uh, let's see, 2 and 3 is 5, and 4 is 6, 7, 8, 9, 9 eighths is less than 12 eighths, and then here we've got 3, and 3 is 6, and 1 is 7, and 5 is 12 so I believe we get 12 eighths exactly. And that's decomposing fractions.